everybody, welcome back to the homestead. My name is Kevin and this is my wife Sarah. Well, earlier this winter we had a bit of a problem on the homestead. Our chickens had seasonal depression. Now I know that that's probably not really what was going on and I know that this happens every winter uh, with the chickens, uh, but it sure did seem like it. We had so many just cloudy, dreary days and the chickens didn't even want to come out of their chicken coop. Half the time they didn't even like come down off their roosts. They thought it was nighttime almost all day long. And because of that, they stopped laying eggs, which is like the dreaded thing to happen on the homestead is when your chickens stop laying in the winter. So out of 16 chickens, we were only getting maybe one egg a day. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. A lot of days it wasn't even that. I mean, so it definitely wasn't enough to provide uh, for the needs of our family for sure. Uh, so this year, we decided to try something different. Um, we've always read about putting lights in the barn and putting them on a timer and seeing if that would make a difference. Uh, we never really did it before because, well, to be honest, when we lived in Arizona, uh, it really wasn't an issue. Our chickens pretty much laid year-round. In Arizona, we actually experienced kind of the opposite thing, where in the summer it got so hot that they kind of stopped laying at that point, and it was almost a nice break for them in the winter that they kept, they kept laying. Right. And now since we've been in Missouri, we just honestly haven't gotten around to putting uh, lights in our barn to see if it would help. Uh, but this year, uh, we decided to try it. And holy cow, <laughs> are we amazed at the difference that it has made. So I installed an, an LED uh, shop light in, our, in the barn and I hooked it on a timer and I set it up so that the chickens are getting about 14 hours of light a day. Uh, same thing actually that I'm doing with my quail. Um, so they, the timer comes on at 6 a.m. and it goes off about 8 p.m. And it only took about maybe three or four days after we put the light up that all of a sudden it's like the chickens were just out of their funk. They're moving around, they're wanting to go outside again, and most importantly, they're laying a ton of eggs. They're laying a ton of eggs. Uh, we're getting sometimes almost a dozen a day from our 16 hens, which is great. In the winter. In the winter. You know, I am following a lot of people on Instagram and YouTube and, and blogs and everybody is still talking about how their chickens are barely laying any eggs. Uh, but ours have come out of the funk with a vengeance. My goodness, we're actually kind of overrun with them right now, which I am not going to complain no. at all because they seem to go through a cycle up and down with molting and winter and those kinds of things. So we're excited to be overrun. And I actually have four extra dozen eggs today that I'm going to be freezing so that we can use them in the upcoming months when the chickens cut back again. And then we're also going to show you guys how you can uh, bake the shells in the oven and then we grind that up and we use it as a calcium supplement in this garden uh, when we plant our plants. And it seems to make a pretty big difference. So today we're going to take care of these four extra dozen and show you guys what we do with them. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to freeze uh, the eggs. These four dozen eggs, I'm actually going to be scrambling in the bowl before I freeze them. And I'm going to freeze them a dozen eggs at a time. And the reason I'm doing that this time is because on Sundays after church, I always make some kind of scrambled eggs for brunch after church. And I use a dozen, a full dozen eggs uh, for the family. Now, a lot of times we do have leftovers and then that's a good breakfast for Kevin and I on Monday morning. But during the times of the year when our egg supply is really low, on Sundays that's the day that I really miss having eggs because scrambled eggs, whatever I throw in it, uh, it's just a really fast and easy lunch option for us. And when I don't have them, then I'm scrambling <laughs> for other lunch ideas that are quick. It's amazing that we get a lot of comments. Uh, we did a video once before about freezing eggs and we actually got quite a few comments from people who didn't know that you could freeze eggs or that they froze well. And they actually freeze really well. 
Now the trick to freezing eggs really is um, they freeze best if you scramble them because if you don't scramble them the yolk gets kind of rubbery. It just works better to scramble them before you freeze them. Everything's mixed up and, and the yolk doesn't get rubbery. So that's what I'm going to do today. We're going to be freezing these in freezer bags and today I have quart size freezer bags and I think that this is best as a two-person project and I always use a canning funnel. It just helps this process. Perfect. The reason why I like to freeze these types of things in freezer bags is because I can get a lot of the air out of the bag which will really minimize freezer burn. Also, I will freeze them flat so that when I thaw them out, I can do that really quickly just in a, um, a sink full of warm or lu lukewarm water. Works really well. I do the same thing with uh, soups that I'm freezing and we do the same thing for all of our ground meat. There's one dozen. Perfect. Three to go. So we have all four dozen uh, scrambled and put into bags and now we're left with these pans full of shells. So we're going to teach you guys how we process these so that we can use them on the homestead. Basically we're just going to, um, we're going to cook these for 30 minutes in the oven on 300 degrees. Uh, these are going in the garden. We're actually also going to be feeding these back to the chickens once they're all crushed up. It's a good form of calcium for them and the quail. So these won't be used for human consumption, so I'm not worried about washing them. That's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, you can use eggshells to make your own homemade calcium supplements, uh, but there is a longer process. You have to wash all of the shells and all the egg whites and stuff out of them. But because these are going into the garden and going to be fed back to the animals, uh, you don't have to go to that extent. So we're just going to put these in the oven at uh, 300 degrees. For 30 minutes. I didn't say is that when you put them on the cookie sheet to make sure that they're just in a single layer I oftentimes will put the eggshell inside of itself when I'm not going to do that but make sure that they're just you know a single layer and not inside each other. So let me grab a jar of eggshells that I have waiting to go into the garden so that I can show you the consistency that we grind them into. One concern that we've heard from a lot of people is that they're afraid that if they start feeding eggshells back to their chickens that it's going to make their chickens want to start eating eggs. Uh, and there's some truth to that, but only if you feed them back in what looks like egg form. If you grind them up or make them into something like we do, uh, you really don't have that problem. Uh, the chickens don't know that these are eggs, and so they're not going to start going after their own eggs after being fed these. So let me show you how, how uh, finely we chop them. So you can see the size pieces that we crush them down to. Now I want to tell you that we don't grind these. We actually crush our eggshells rather than grinding them up because I actually almost ruined my food processor bowl because the eggshells are so hard that it was like ruining the yeah, bowl. It was like Plastic. sandblasting the inside of the food processor bowls. So there you go. Now you know what to do if you end up with too many eggs on your homestead. Uh, two easy things to do so that you don't have any waste. Uh, freeze your eggs and grind up the shells to be able to use as a calcium supplement for your garden and your animals. So if you enjoyed this video and you know somebody else who would enjoy it, please go ahead and share that with them. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing now. We would appreciate it. Check us out on all of our social media. And until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.